today I'm taking a little walk through the forest and besides all of the amazing flora and fauna that you're going to see here you're also going to notice that you seem to get sweaty really fast now what if I told you that you're not actually just feeling sweat but in fact it's the condensation of the water vapor in the atmosphere that's actually forming against your skin now water vapor in the atmosphere is actually called humidity and humidity is measured as a percentage the higher the percentage of humidity the greater the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere now there's a higher humidity in the forest as compared to the open air outside and the reason for that is simple there are actually two reasons now the first of these reasons is to do with the structure of the leaf leaves contain numerous tiny pore-like structures called stomata the majority of which are found on the underside of a leaf a microscope is usually required to see these structures water in the leaves can evaporate and escape via the stomata. This is known as transpiration. Although a loss of water can be a bad thing to a plant if it is uncontrolled, the open stomata allow carbon dioxide into the leaves for photosynthesis to occur for the plant to make food. So now we know where the water vapor comes from. But why does it accumulate in the forest? Well, the trees in the forest tend to be large and densely packed, and they act like a barrier to the wind. This means that the wind that would ordinarily sweep the water vapor away cannot get into the forest. So the water vapor remains and the humidity stays high. Today we're going to be focusing on transpiration. Now in addition to transpiration, we'll also be looking at a list of objectives that are also relevant to the movement of water within a plant. So we just learned that transpiration was the loss of water vapor from the leaves. But what is the importance of transpiration? And where does the plant get the water which is lost at the leaves? All plants get their water from the soil. The water moves from the soil into the roots, up into the xylem in the stem, and into the leaves where they can be used in photosynthesis or lost via transpiration. There are different physical processes involved in the movement of water in plants. The primary processes are osmosis and transpiration pull. Transpiration pull, as the name implies, is a process whereby water is pulled up the stem to the leaves because of the loss of water at the leaves via transpiration. We can liken this process to the use of a straw in humans. By placing a straw in a beverage and creating a suction at the top of the straw, the liquid flows into the straw and a continuous stream of beverage enters your mouth. Transpiration is similar in that it causes a suction at the leaf which pulls water up the straw-like xylem. Transpiration pull is the main driving force in getting water to the top of tall plants and trees. Without it, these plants would die if they became too tall. Transpiration functions to give the leaf water for photosynthesis. Since it also carries dissolved ions from the soil, the plant can use these ions for growth and development. The loss of water at the leaves also takes heat with it. So it has a cooling effect on the leaves, which can get very warm being in direct sunlight for long periods of time. Now let's look at demonstrating transpiration in plants. Now before we get started, it's always a good idea to follow safety protocols when ever doing an experiment. Although today we're not going to be using any harmful or toxic substances, it's always a good idea to protect oneself before you get started with your experiment. Today I'll be wearing latex gloves together with safety glasses. Now another great practice whenever you're doing an experiment is to always ensure that you have an adult supervising. This can be a parent, guardian or a teacher who can help guide you through the experiment. To do these experiments, we're going to need some apparatus and material. Today we're going to be using a medium sized potted plant, water, tape, red food coloring, a spatula for mixing, a beaker for our solution, a scale, and a plastic bag. In addition to this apparatus and material, we're also going to need some freshly picked light green leaves. Now, the trick to this is that we don't pick these leaves until we're absolutely ready for them. We don't want to introduce air into the xylem of the leaf. This will cause our experiment to fail or take very long. So for this experiment, we're going to be using our food coloring, our beaker, our tape, and our freshly picked leaves. So first we take our beaker, and then we place some of our red food coloring. Okay. 
and we dilute it with our water. Next, we ensure that it's mixed thoroughly. And we take our tape and stick it along the edge. Now our next step is that we need to get the leaves. When picking these leaves, it's always best to ensure that you break these leaves off at the base of the petiole where it attaches to the stem. Immediately after picking the leaf, place the base of the petiole into the solution that has been prepared and stick the leaf in place using the tape. Now that our experiment is completely prepared, we're going to place our beaker into a warm, open environment for two hours. Now what do you predict will happen to the leaf at the end of the experiment? Do you expect that it will change in appearance? Now for experiment 2, if you don't have a kitchen scale, a bathroom scale works just as well. For experiment 2, we first take our plastic bag and we open it up. Then, we take our medium-sized potted plant and we place it into the bag. Following this, we take our water and we're going to water this plant. Now, I'm using 500 milliliters of water because this is a medium-sized potted plant. Now, we pull the bag over the pot. Your goal here is to cover the soil without covering the leaves of the plant. Then we take our tape and we stick our bag in place. Next, we take our potted plant and we wait. So our plant has an initial weight of 6600 grams or 6.6 .6 kilograms. Next, we're going to take our potted plant and leave it in an open environment for 24 hours. So now it's time to look at the results of experiment number one. Now before looking at the results from experiment one, we first place a white background. The white background makes it easier for us to see color changes that would appear on the leaf. Next, we need to remove our leaf from the solution. Take care not to damage the leaf as you are removing it from the tape. The leaf has a notable red color. This is due to the solution moving into the leaf via transpiration pull. Looking at a side-by-side -side comparison of the leaves, you can see that not only the cells but also the veins have changed color. It has now been 24 hours since we put our plant into the sun. Let's take its final weight. So what caused this significant loss in mass in this potted plant? Well, considering that the pot itself, the bag, the soil and the plant itself are all generally considered to be about the same mass because within 24 hours none of them should have significantly changed, it means that the only thing that could have been lost to cause this drop in mass would have been water. Now since the plastic bag is wrapped around the pot, it means that evaporation from the soil is very minimal. So the majority of water that would have been lost would have occurred via transpiration at the leaves. So there you go, two simple experiments on transpiration that you can do at home or at school. Now it's important to remember that if you try to replicate these experiments and you don't get exactly the same results that I do, that's okay. Depending on the species of the plant that you use, depending on the size of the plant, depending on the humidity in the air, the amount of light, the temperature, there are lots of other factors that can influence it. And so sometimes you may need to run the experiment for longer than 24 hours. So I hope this has been helpful and I hope that this video helps to make the concepts a little bit clearer for you. So until the next time, be safe, have a good day, bye everyone.